and welcome to video number two. I'm so excited that you are here. If you have not watched the first video yet, please go ahead and stop this and go back and watch the first video because this does kind of add on to what we talked about in the first video. I hope you loved and got some good information in the first video. We talked all about social media, how to get your, um, your profile set up in terms of what to post, how often to post, how to brand yourself on it. Um, both you know on Facebook but also on uh, social media as a whole uh, whether you're using Instagram or Facebook or something else we went through all of the metrics around social media to give you an idea of what was going on with the industry as you think about what's the right place for you so I hope you really enjoyed uh, everything that you learned in video one and I'm super excited to uh, get started with this one but before we get started just in case you forgot I'm Sandy Sinden I am the owner and CEO of Sandy sandysinden.com and the uh, great escape and I have been in marketing for over 30 years I started in corporate and had a very successful corporate career managing marketing teams and specifically digital marketing teams so all things online I have done I have seen <laughs> I have been through I've also been an entrepreneur myself for about the last 10 years and then this year just made the full plunge to go in to be an entrepreneur full-time so I decided that I wanted to be able to kind of really help entrepreneurs, everything that I had learned over these last 30 years and all of the, the courses and, and um, events that I've gone to just kind of share with what's going on. So in the last video, we left off with, hey, all of this is really good and posting's great and you need to post consistently and you need to post so many times a day. Um, and I said, there's one really big component that you need to make sure you've included in that. And for some of you, you're going to be like, no, I don't want to do this. No, thank you. And that is video. Video is absolutely hands down king of kings when it comes to content right now. And I'll tell you why. Um, if you don't know, it's really because of the relationship. Like if you and I don't know each other right now um, and you're just hearing me the first time, you're getting an opportunity to kind of, you know, know a little bit more about me, see, you know, how I behave, how I speak. You know, it's not just this written word. It's not just listening, but all of your senses are kind of coming to play when you watch me in a video. And so that's really the reason that video is so big and Facebook Live and Instagram Stories and Instagram Live, those are all just really great ways for connecting. And that's what's really important in the world right now in marketing. It's all about the connection and engaging with people. It didn't used to be. You could literally just throw benefits and features out to people and that was good enough. But now I'm sure you've heard, it's really about the connection. And so in order to get that, video just has that ability to much quicker tie you in. So what I want to talk about today, because I know people hear video and one, they're terrified, like, oh God, I don't know how to do it. I don't have the money to go get a studio set up. Or what am I supposed to say? What am I supposed to do? Da, da, da. You know, there's all these different things that go through your head. And so today I kind of wanted to walk through those. And so I have a list over here to uh, your right my left I think um, because like I said in the first video I'm getting older I don't remember everything and so I will be looking over to just make sure that I don't miss anything so please bear with me as I kind of turn my head it's not you don't take it personal I just want to make sure I give you all of the value that I can so first thing we're going to talk about is um, you know why video you, I think we talked already a little but you know it's about building your brand it's about uh, creating you as an expert um, it's a really quick way, you'd be surprised when, when you start putting videos out there, you're almost like a little micro celebrity. Like people, you know, start to, I mean, I know, you know, some of the people that I have followed online when I've met them in person, it's like, oh my God, I get to meet, you know, because you've become so connected to them and you feel like you're part of their life and you've almost become friends with them. And so the power of video is, is amazing. Um, I had no idea, you know, when I first got really using the video and the other thing with video is it doesn't have to be perfect. The more authentic, the more real, the more mess ups you make, the more human you become. And that's what people are connecting to is that humanness. Um, it gives you the ability to connect with people and then it also gives you the ability to build an audience while you're sleeping. 
because your video is going to live out there. People are going to hear you on all different time zones and you're going to have that ability to be constantly connecting with people. So let's go ahead and talk about the format. So there's two different kinds of video. There's a pre-recorded video like I'm doing right here. And then of course there is um, the, the lives. So what I'm going to talk about first is your pre-recorded video. There is definitely a sequence that you want to follow. Um, you want to keep these shorter. You want to keep them three to five minutes unless you're doing training. And then of course you can go longer and you'll start to get an idea as you do videos that, you know, are people watching them all the way through? Or are they cutting out after a certain amount of time? And that's why there's, it's really important that you have a sequence in how you do your videos because you want to make sure that you get the information you need to get out right out the beginning so that you don't lose people. So the first thing you want to do is create a hook and an easy way to create a hook is through a question. Um, you really want to hit somebody in a pain point. You know, are you tired of, of trying every diet in the world and still never losing any weight? You know, that'll catch somebody's attention right away. So think about when your intro, it, it needs to be some type of question or some kind of statement that really gets to their pain point. It's got to be a strong headline that grabs somebody's attention and makes them want to actually listen further to your video. Then you want to do an intro. Introduce yourself and what you do. You know, I'm Sandy Sinden, I help Driven Dreamers, you know, whatever your thing is, introduce yourself so they know who you are and why they should even listen to you. And then what you want to do is you want to go back and kind of repeat after you've asked the question, then after you've introduced yourself, it's really going to be, okay, here's what we're going to talk about today. And this is what, you know, you're going to walk away with. So you kind of break down what they can expect to hear on the video today. Just like what I did at the beginning, I kind of said, here's what, you know, we did yesterday and now we're going to talk about video. So you want to let them know what, what problem are you going to solve for them? And then you want to um, get right into the solution. What are the, uh, not more than three steps and what are those three steps? So you want to basically teach them. This is when you're going to go ahead and, and say, you know, the three steps to this are that, or to do this, you need to do that. You know, it's whatever that teaching point is. And it's really important when you're doing the teaching point, make sure it's something they can actually take action on because there's nothing worse than you get a lot of content and a lot of information, but there's nothing that you can actually act on. So be sure that you're putting something in there that they can actually take an action on. And then you want to just summarize what you've talked about, you know, kind of recap it and then a call to action. A call to action is really important because you've in, in all of your marketing, you need a call to action because everything you do, you want to tell them what you want them to do next. It's called the customer journey. And so you want to drive that customer journey. So your call to action could be check out my blog on XYZ, or it could be download this free resource that I gave you. Or if you want a 15 minute coaching, you know, appointment call, you know, here's the number or whatever anything you want it to be, but you need to have a call to action. Every time they land somewhere, they should know where they're going to next. So the, that's pretty much the flow. And I'm going to run through it again real quick. It's going to be your question or your hook, your intro, who you are. You're going to talk about, um, repeat again, what it is you're going to, you know, teach them what you're going to talk about, kind of recap your hook. Then you're going to go ahead and do the teaching points. And then you're going to recap that and then it's then you do your call to action and that's kind of the flow that it takes so the next thing i want to talk about um, is once you kind of know you know what your flow looks like and it's not going to be perfect you're going to mess up and you're going to you know but have yourself an outline and it's far better that if you can't remember every single thing you do what i'm doing and that's look over to the side and just quickly see now when you're doing certain videos you may want to get a um a teleprompter and use that but for the most part people just want to see that you're real and i would rather look and know that you know i'm giving you all of the content than forget half of it because I, i'm too scared to look over and i want to look so perfect so i'm not perfect i'm 56 years old my memory is not what it was 20 years ago and i will not remember everything if i do not write it down so i am okay with that so just same thing don't get too caught up again the more your people think they they know you and they get to know you the better um the better it is sorry my screen went black of course i'm gonna make sure to touch this all right so let's talk about what you need so that's the easy part and and people overcomplicate that you do not need a fancy dslr camera now if you have one awesome use it if you were looking to buy one and you you know got the money great buy it that's you can definitely get one but your iphone or your android are totally fine most people are using their phone i'm filming this on my iphone 10 
or X, I always call it Tam the X, um, you can use your phone for it. What's important is to make sure that you have good lighting and you have good audio. So you might wanna spend the money. I have a lapel mic right here that I use. I've also got a mic that I can attach to my phone that I use. Um, that's really important because you wanna make sure that people are you know, able to hear you. The other thing is good lighting. So either if you've got a place in your house or outdoors, um, you know, just be careful what time outdoors because the sun can really screw things up and you might wanna do a little test clip but just having the right lighting. Um, you could also get on Amazon for like a hundred bucks. It's called a cowboy lighting kit and it's super easy to use. And that's what I'm using right now because I film um, in my office. So go ahead and have your lighting. You also have the light rings that actually attach right to your phone. So if you're out with a selfie stick and you're gonna be out at night or whatever, or, little, or the, as the sun's going down and you need a little extra light, you can put a little ring on there. So again, I would invest a little bit of money in the microphone and I would invest a little money in the lighting. Um, but outside of that, I think you're completely fine. And then you might want a selfie stick. Now I do all of my editing, I'm a Mac girl, so I do it all on, on iMovie. But there are things like screencast and screenflow and um, final cut that are a little you know that you can purchase but if you have a mac and you have the the flow and if you have a pc i'm not sure if there's a free one or you know just start out there and if you have no idea how to do it now i can only speak to the mac you can go to the apple store that's what i did and just had them teach me and now i've gotten pretty good at it the more you want to get intricate on your videos, then you, you know you might need to, to upgrade to like Final Cut. You can also use somebody to do your video editing if you want. There's lots of people out there um, that can do the video editing for you, and I do that too. I have someone I use in the Philippines, and so it's pretty inexpensive. I think it's like a hundred bucks for five videos. So a lot of times, if you can find good resources overseas, that's a great way to to get your video edited as well. All right, so we've covered that. So next is we're gonna talk about lives. So lots here. Strategy for lives. One is have, define your content strategy. What are you gonna talk about? Really think about what is it that you're gonna you know, talk about and how often are you gonna talk about it? So uh, talk, or how, how often are you gonna do a live? Are you gonna do it once a week, once every other week, once a month, three times a week? I would suggest at least starting with once a week and pick a day and time so that people get consistent with it. And you can even give it a, a, sh a sh show name if you want. And then think about the kind of topics that you wanna talk about. And I would say come up with, you know, a, a five, five topics, maybe three to five topics that you might wanna you know, talk about depending on what your business is. Like for me, I'll talk about things that are marketing, I'll talk about things that are mindset, um, I'll talk about time management. So there's different things that, that are relevant to my business that I will talk about. So think about on a, on a bigger scale, what is gonna be your strategy? What are the things that you're gonna be known for and that you're gonna talk about that are relevant to what your business is? Um, let's see, so, Da, da, da. Uh, I think we went over that personal growth, that sort of thing. Share your brilliance, you know, become an expert on a topic and share it with people. Don't be scared to, to get out there and really share yourself. Now, we talked about in the first one, um, you know, staying on your profile and you can absolutely stay on your profile. You don't have to have a page. And so let's just say you're, you're a coach or you're in, in network marketing, um, and you don't want it on your profile, you don't wanna really be talking about the business. And, and like I said on the last one, it's sort of that 80 to 20%. So what you wanna do is find like three to five topics that you know a lot about that you can share and add value with your audience because really what it's about is building the relationship with them. And then once you get the conversation going, then you can you know kind of bring them offline to share you know your product or your business or whatever it is that you wanna share with them. But if you can come up with three to five, like if you are, um, let's say you're in an all green product, you could talk about what does it mean to go all green and talk about the different things, chemicals and all that. And so you can start to educate people on that. If you're, you know, uh, uh, let's say you're into health and wellness and you, you have good vitamins or something. I mean, just talk about some of the dif different things around health. So again, 80% of the time, it's about adding value and, and talking about those things and educating about those, and then 20% that you would ever kind of put anything out there in terms of your, of your business. So again, you're just kind of getting on your profile and you're branding yourself to be known for a few things. And I started doing that. I actually did a 30-day video challenge. I'm about to do another one on Monday. 
And every day I was getting five to seven people asking to friend me that were connections from other. And so, you know, people will see, it'll come through and they'll see it. And that's how you start to build out your profile. Um, make sure that you write a compelling title for what you're gonna be talking about. You know, you can do say things like how to X with, with Y or X ways to Y without Z, you know, just to give you, I know it's kind of goofy, but just to give you kind of ideas on, on what to write, but let people know what it's gonna be about and make sure you're really hitting on, you know, a pain point that would encourage them to want to actually listen to your um, video. Build your likability factor. It's important that people can connect with you. Don't be somebody else. I said this on the last video. Don't, you know, if you're not funny, don't try to like be all funny. If you're not, you know, like, if you're not the person that uses certain language or certain lingo, don't come on here and start using that lingo because you're not gonna feel authentic. You're gonna feel awkward and people are gonna feel that and it's not gonna come across good. So just be yourself um, and be okay with being yourself. That was hard for me because I watched other people and I'm like, oh, she's so funny or she's so cool or whatever. And I'm like, okay, well, that's so not me. Like, I'm just who I am. So like me or don't like me, I am who I am. I am who I am. There's a song. Um, oh, The Greatest Showman. Oh, greatest greatest movie ever. Don't mean to digress, but oh, digress. Great, great movie. Every entrepreneur should see it. Um, be consistent. You know, always show up. If you're gonna be there on a Monday at five, be there on a Monday at five. Be unapologetically you. That's what I was saying. Just be yourself. Grow your audience. So when you're doing lives, tell people, hey, if you like the content that you got here, share it, share it on your thing, uh, message it to a friend, encourage people to share your, your Facebook lives. That's how you can start to really grow your audience. And again, you gotta be very purposeful and intentful, intentive, intent, intent, I'm not sure what the word is, but have intent on what you're trying to accomplish with that live. And that's something I know even for myself, I've got to be really careful to, to put some thought behind that and not just so quickly go without knowing exactly these things. And so create yourself just a little outline of exactly what it is you're going to you know, talk about, what your call to action is going to be, what you want people to get out of it, um, you know, so that you have that and you're not kind of winging it when it comes, which is why I have my notes because otherwise I'd totally be winging things. Be human first, be a marketer second. I, I can't even stress that enough. People have to know that you actually care and you're not just trying to market something to them. Only talk to one person. You should have your avatar so clear that when you're talking, you know exactly the person you're talking to. Um, that doesn't mean that other people aren't gonna listen to you, but it's just your messaging becomes so much easier when you actually know who you're speaking to. Let's see, uh, reward good behavior when you're trying to grow your audience. So, you know, maybe hold contests if people share or like or, you know, engage with your thing that they get in a drawing for something free. I've seen people have little marketing tchotchkes that they'll give away free if somebody, you know, shares the most times out of their thing. And that gets people going really quick. That's a really cool thing. Um, and then convert like crazy. So you want to bring these people, which means you need to have a call to action. There has to be something that you take them from there, whether, you know, if you don't have a blog, then maybe you bring them, you know, over to uh, somewhere else. Maybe you're bringing them to a webinar that you're going to do on something or, you know, uh, you have them read something. Maybe you've got another video that they could take a look at. Maybe you've got a YouTube channel and you've got stuff going on over there, but some type of call to action to get them to take movement. Um, and then change the cover image of your Facebook profile um, so that you have that, or not your profile, I'm sorry, the thumbnail. So when the live goes, when it goes live, it just picks, um, it picks a picture. You can actually create a custom thumbnail and put it there instead. But I think it, there's like 10 options and you can pick the best one, but if you don't like any, create a custom thumbnail and you can use Canva to do that. C-A-N-V-A, -A, Canva, super easy. And the other cool thing is you can actually put copy then on there as well. So if you wanted to put something about what the video is gonna be about, you'll be able to do that as well. 
and then uh, shoot Facebook Live, broadcast like a pro. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. Again, it goes back to the lighting and the sound. As long as people can hear and see you, or yeah, hear and see you, that's all you really wanna do. The worst thing is when you, see, you have those lives that are so dark, you can't even see the person, and then there's so much background noise, you can't hear them. Just make sure you're in a place that you can at least do that. It doesn't have to be perfect. All right, so we've gone through everything in terms of kind of getting prepped and, and having a bigger strategy for your Facebook Lives. Let's talk about a checklist that you wanna kind of go through before you go live. Um, tell people what they're gonna get. So, you know, it goes with the title. Tell them what you're gonna be talking about and what they can expect to get from it so that they get, a, you know, know what they're getting into. Introduce yourself. Now, if you're doing it on your profile, you're, you probably, if you're like me, you've got a lot of people there that don't even know you. So introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Sandy Sinden. I'm a mom of two kids. For those of you know you who know me, you already know this, but for the, all of my new friends, you know, here's who I am. So that they feel connected and they, you know, are being recognized that maybe you guys don't have a personal relationship yet. And so you can just give a little bit of information. If you're a health coach, just say, and I'm a health coach you know, addict, or I'm a health freak, or whatever it might be. Um, tell people to share and tag. We talked about that. Share your life for more exposure. Um, acknowledge your viewers. That's one thing. Although my son, I was doing a live the other night, and he's like, Mom, you don't have to stop every five minutes. I'm like, dude, you don't understand. It's about connection. And it is. You want to acknowledge when people show up on your live, they're taking time, you know, and time is the one thing that we can never get back. I value the fact that you guys are, you know, sharing these with me and, and letting me take the time to, to share with you here. Um, because I, I get it. We are all really busy. So acknowledge people for coming. Um, I've had a lot of fun because I've seen people join in mine that I haven't talked to in a long time. So it's like homecoming. So it's really fun. Let's see. Share stories or experiences. That's what sells. At the end of the day, it's all about stories. So if, you know, I just was at an event last weekend and there were some incredible stories. And so share those kind of stories because that's what will get people interested and intrigued when they hear share those before and afters if you're doing, you know, weight loss. Like those are the sort of things that people really connect with. Um, bank on 20 minutes for your live. I, you know, could go 20 to 30 minutes. I don't know that I would go any longer than that. I, I sometimes do a two minute live. I just hop on and have something I wanna kind of a point I wanna get across. So there is no set limit. It really is you knowing your audience and what they'll stay engaged with. If you're not getting any comments or any connections, then obviously it's probably either not a topic they like or it might have been too long. You know, and ask people to share. Try to ask prompting questions so that people have to actually respond. Or, you know, I, I've been on a lot of them where, you know, give me a one if you've ever watched me before. Give me a two if you're brand new. You know, that sort of thing. So you can definitely do things to try to engage your audience. Um, make sure you have a call to action. Let's see, entertain people um, more than just educate. So make it fun and, you know, make it real. Like I did last Friday, I actually did a live out on in the ocean at, on our bay on my paddleboard. And I just kind of scanned around um, everything that was going on. And just that's where I did my live. So it was something different. It was interesting. You know, I had a lot of people comment, you know, it's so beautiful there. And, you know, that... So just be creative. It doesn't have to be the same old, same old. Um, and then take a few minutes at the end for any questions. So depending on what you're doing, you know, you may or may not have questions, but hey, at the end, just say, does anybody have any questions or comments or thoughts about what we've been, you know, been talking about here today? Um, and a lot of times people are gonna engage with you during the time anyway. So last thing, we're almost, we're at the end here. We're coming to the finish line. Um, is your Facebook, after your Facebook Live, what do you wanna do? You can edit the video that you did on Facebook Live. Um, you just, once it, it takes a few minutes for it to um, completely resolve, but once it has, you've got the ability to edit and you can put a title and a description. You also have that ability when you start the live where you can put that, so you know, go ahead and put that and then after the video, because you're gonna have people watching the replay and that, you can put a little more information in there if you want to. And you can also maybe put a link to take them to somewhere else if you do have a blog or YouTube or somewhere that you might wanna take them online. Maybe you have a sales page, whatever, you know, that you're wanting to move them over to, you can do that. And then look at your stats, you know, pay attention to your lives and see which ones are working, which ones are not, because you'll start to get a feel for what are the topics people actually, you know, take 
interested in and which ones are they just don't care about because um, that'll help you when you're kind of looking at your bigger strategy to figure out what you should and shouldn't be talking about. Um, engage with people's comments. This is really, excuse me, really, really important is if you're going to take that time to create a live and you're going to get people actually engaging and you don't engage back, you have lost the mark. Like that is the biggest piece of this is you're building that relationship. So make sure you're going back and you're engaging with them. And then post any links in the comments that you might have mentioned in the live. So if you talked about, you know, an article or a page somewhere or anything that you may have re referenced or a resource that you have for them, make sure you post that in the notes afterwards so that they're able to go ahead and get that. And then the other thing you can do is if you do have a blog is take your um, live and embed it onto your website. And then you can just create some notes to go around it. Kind of just, you know, more like show notes, like with a podcast of what you're talking about and what it's going to be about. So those are all of my tips that surround video. So now we know how to do social media. We know how to create a good profile. We know how to post. We know how to do all of that like we talked about. Now we know the importance of video. And so the last piece that's missing is what do we do with these people as we're engaging with them? Like, do we put them into an email campaign or do we just talk to them on Facebook? Like what comes next? So stay tuned for video three, which will be coming out in a couple of days. And I will pull the whole puzzle of social media together. You'll have everything you need to grow your social media, to grow your business with your social media and easy, quick steps that you can get started with right away. So thanks again so much for spending the time with me. I hope this has added great value. If you have any questions, you can reach me at sandy at sandysinden.com. I'm happy to help you in any way that I can. And I'm super excited to see you on the inside. Have a blessed day. Thank you.